In this video, I'm going to go through some basic um, applications of the tree method. Uh, we'll run some simple proofs and talk in general terms about, you know, how to do these proofs um, and what they're, you know, how to understand how they work. So uh, let's begin. Let's take something. Let's say we're given some. I'll just make up some argument here. Let's say we have um, we have something like if p then q and uh, let's see not r and t um, and let's say it's r or uh, p then q. Okay, so this is what we're trying to prove. We're trying to prove that this is a valid argument. Remember that these are the premises. This is the conclusion. Okay, so how do we go about doing that? So let's talk about our, um, our method. So we're using the reductio method. And how does that work? Well, First, we take the denial of the conclusion, so in this case it would be not Q, join it with the premises. see if they generate a contradiction. So these are our three steps in terms of you know how we actually do the or what the, the background is for, for what we're doing in the proof. So these are reductio arguments. Again we've talked about those. They're indirect methods of proof. And an indirect proof of this kind the purpose is to show that the denial of the conclusion cannot be the case. So if the denial of the conclusion cannot be the case, then you know that the conclusion must be the case. One more time. A reductio assumes that if you have the denial of the conclusion and that generates a contradiction, meaning all was false, false in all possible circumstances, once you join the denial of the contradiction of the conclusion to the premises, you generate a contradiction. If that's the case, then according to this assumption, the assumption of indirect of the indirect proof of the reductio argument, then the conclusion must be the case. So if I'm arguing for A and I can prove that not A is impossible, then we must conclude A according to this view. All right. So in practice, what does that mean? Let's go back to our problem. We've got if p then q. We've got not r and t. We've got r or p and q. Now remember, of course, since this is sentential logic in principle, we could build a truth table here. But that would have a cumbersomely large number of rows, and we're not going to waste our time with that when we have other methods. So let's take the denial of the conclusion then and start building our tree. So the denial of the conclusion is not Q. And we want to show that this generates a contradiction. How do we do that with the tree, with the tree method? So as you know from reading, um, what we're going to do is break down each of the compound sentences using the tree rules into their constituents. So not Q, P then Q, R and T, or rather not R and T, R or P, and what we're going to do is take each of these compound sentences, like this one, this one, and this one, and break it according to the tree rules. Let's just go ahead and do that um, right now. So I'm just going to take them in order, even though that might not always be the best strategy, but uh, that's all right. So we'll take it in order. We'll first start with if p then q. We know that the tree rule for if p then q is split path not p q why because we know that p then q is equivalent to 
often not the case that P or Q. Okay, so we know that, and we know that the tree rule for um, uh, for a, for a disjunction is just split the paths. Okay, so what we do then is we have currently over here only one path. So the path begins here and for, at not Q, if P then Q, not R and T, R or P. And so what we're going to do is split the path in two. So now we have two paths. And the paths split into not P and Q. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to check that line, that compound sentence, as having been resolved. So I don't need to go back and do it again. There are a variety of methods for keeping track of these kinds of things that uh, different authors will use. But for us, we'll just check that. We'll just put a check mark next to it. So now we've got not R and T and R or P. Now let's look at not R and T. That's the next case. So not R and T will have to fall. So well, two open paths are its descendants, right? The not P path over here and the Q path to the right. So anything we do above an open path has to happen in that open path. And so since we have two open paths, we're going to have not R over here, T over here, not R over here, T over here. Now why is that? Well, we have this tree rule that we're following that with a conjunction, both conjuncts fa fall beneath one another in the same path, or fall below in the same path. Okay, so now we just have one more to do. We've got R or P, so let's go ahead and two paths here. We've got an R path and a P path. R path and a P path. And now what we've done is we've fully resolved the, um, the problem into atomic constituents. Now let's go back and look at each of these paths in order. So If we look at the first path, we've got right here R, yeah, so this is the path as a whole. We'll just include this whole thing. Okay, so the path is red, not Q, if P then Q, not R and T, R or P, not P, not R, T and R. And now our question is, is that a consistent way that things can be? Can we, can we have all of these statements holding true together? And if we look, we notice we've got R here and not R here. They can't be true together, so we say that this path closes. So this is a closed path. Okay, how about the next path? We've got, um, let's pick a different color for the different path. Here we've got P, T, not R, not P, and then all of this stuff. Can these things all be true together? Well, you've already seen that P, there's P here and not P here, so they, this path closes also. Okay, so these are inconsistent ways things could be. Let's look at the remaining two paths. Here we've got R, T, not R, Q, and then all of this stuff. Well, we've got two contradictions in here. We've got R, and we've got not R. So it closes. We've also got Q, and not Q. So we know that this path is closed. And then finally, taking a look at the final path, we've got P, T, R, or not R, Q, all of this stuff, and happily, We've got Q 
and not Q here also. So this path also closes. So what you're saying, or what we're saying, is once you completely resolve these guys, when they're conjoined with the negation of the conclusion, which is an assumed premise for the purpose of an indirect proof, if you can show that there's no possible way for them all to be true, or for, for any, there's no possible way that this can come out true, it's always going to be false when you join these premises with the negation of the conclusion, then you can be sure that the conclusion, the unnegated conclusion, the original conclusion, follows. Okay, and that's a reductio argument form. So um, you'll need to learn the tree rules. You'll need to um, practice the trees. There's a little bit of strategy involved in constructing the trees in a smart way, but um, it's a straightforward method of proof. Again, follow the recipe. It's pretty much decidable. Okay, so I had some questions about uh, some of the tree rules. Let's talk about them a little bit. Whoops, where are we? There we go. I had some questions about the tree rules, so we'll um, talk about those a little bit. So specifically the question was, if you have something like this, um, why does the tree rule look like this? Okay, so remember, um, remember our truth table for biconditional? Okay, the truth table for biconditional says that if B, if and only if, or sorry, P, if and only if Q, is true in the first case or the fourth case. So what is the for first and fourth case? Well, the first case is P and Q, and the fourth case is not P and not Q. So what we're going to end up with is we're going to be able to say that P, if and only if Q, is logically equivalent to, or is if and only if, not the case that P and not Q, or P and Q. And that would be the fourth, and that would be the first case. Okay, so if you run the truth table for this, and you run the truth table for this, then you get T, F, F, T, T, F, F, T, in both cases. So now take a look at this guy here. This is clearly, um, well, we've got a disjunction right here. So we know that if we had, we could conclude not P, not Q, P, Q, right here. Okay, why? Well, we split the paths at the disjunction, and then we've got two conjunctions, and the conjunction here, not P and Q, falls out like that. This falls out like that. I hope that answers that question. Um, and then the second part of the question had to do with the negation of the biconditional. 
So the negation of the biconditional, um, remember, what's the truth table for this? Well, it's F, T, T, F. True in the second or true in the third case. And what's the second case? The second case is P and not Q. Or, in the third case, not P and Q. So what do we say? We say that not the case that P if and only if Q is equivalent to P and not Q or not P and Q. Okay, so if we look at this over here, it's going to be a disjunction with P not Q and not P Q. Okay, why? Because this, of course, is not P and Q, and this, of course, is P and not Q. Okay, I hope that answers that question. Um, we could do some proofs, if you'd like, with the, well, I'll go ahead and do them, using the negation of the biconditional, and um, yeah, let's go ahead and run one of those.